All right, folks, uh, welcome to the 21st episode of the Concrete Injection Made Easy podcast. I'm your host, Tom Ozimak, for a change. I'm actually an English teacher by by trade. I do specialized um, English language courses for uh, for professionals in a variety of industries, and I've been working with your regular host, Mateusz Fors, on... Um, polishing up uh, some of the projects uh, that involve English. Um, and uh, one of the things that I uh, got into with him was uh, helping him out with uh, putting together and editing the core principles for effective concrete injection. But I don't want to take the rabbit out of the hat quite yet, and I'm going to leave that for, uh, for him. Uh, but when we were... Uh, progressing through the development of the core principles uh there's uh a tidbit in there about drilling holes and the intricacies uh the placement the depth and all these other factors and uh, i found that pretty fascinating and uh you know we got into a discussion about that and um Mateusz has developed uh quite a complex and interesting tool that i'm sure you're going to find fascinating and useful um and which is essentially the point of this episode. We sort of figured what we'd do is we'd, you know, flip the tables a little bit and have me sort of play point and uh, uh, interview him for a change rather than the other way around. And um, the topic of today's episode is the concrete injection drilling calculator. It's a fancy piece of software extraordinarily useful and so here's your regular host Mateusz Furs to give us the lowdown on the concrete injection drilling calculator. Mateusz? Today I'm going to answer some questions and um, yeah everything started with this short uh, joke that in order to do something you have to do something else first. So in order to inject the crack, you have to prepare the concrete, the cracked concrete in a proper way um, uh, to, to make it happen. And one of the most important thing uh, when preparing the crack before injecting is drilling uh, the crack. Um, as Tom mentioned at the very beginning of this conversation, I have um, prepared this short ebook, my first ebook. Uh, titled Six Core Principles for Effective Crack Injection. And guess what? The first principle is drill holes right. Drill holes right means uh, using the uh, best possible knowledge, um, you know, applying uh, good um, angles, good uh, distances from the crack, uh, and understanding what is it all about. So actually the one and the only thing that you have to remember uh, when um, uh, drilling is to get the knowledge and the understanding of the thickness of the crack, right? Right, well, so drilling holes right suggests that you can also drill holes wrong. And when yeah. you do that, well, it happens. obviously yeah. um, there are some uh adverse consequences that uh that you can end up with um wh why is it so important to hold to to drill holes right i mean if you if you drill it wrong what's the worst that can happen you will lose your job yeah <laughs> you will lose uh, uh, the the trust that your client uh, gave you you will lose the best opportunity to uh fill the 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 crack right with your resin and then you know if you uh, if you are about to reinject the crack once again, it's always more difficult because you don't have uh, best places uh, to start to drill uh, because they are already taken. You know, um, then you reinject the crack and you have two sets of uh, holes, your new ones that hopefully are drilled right and the previous holes that have been drilled wrong. So you lose 
huge, huge amount of, uh, of, of, of resin. I can compare it to running a surgery and the patient is, you know, is wounded really badly and the patient loses blood all the time and you need to pump new blood to keep him alive. And it's the same story with a crack. You keep pumping because you know you have to uh, fill a crack with a resin, but the resin flows with uh, with the crack uh, it flows out of the old uh, old uh, holes it flows from everywhere actually um yeah so this is a disaster on the job site it's really disaster on the job site when you drill the hole holes uh, wrong when you don't intersect the concrete in the middle of, it, of its uh, thickness so please don't do it Right, so it'll cost you time, money, and potentially your reputation. Your pride. Up, right. Yeah, which right. is the most important for me, mm-hmm. I guess. Right, right. Um, could you just paint a, a quick picture of what's going to happen if you end up drilling the crack way shallow? So. Uh, yeah, way shallow meaning, deeply. yeah, well, if you, if, you, if you cut the crack too shallow, um, it will... Uh, it will affect that um, you will not drive the resin uh, down to the roof of the whole uh, crack. Yeah, so the crack will not be really filled with resin. And if right, so you'll end up with it, just a superficial repair, and uh, yeah. the 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 depth of the crack is uh, is uh, still going to remain unfilled with resin and there's going to be a, a, a void there and whatever problems associated so, with that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And, then if, so, if, and if you do it too deeply, then what? If you do it too deeply, it means that... Actually, this is going to be the, the same situation, uh, but on the other side of the um, of the concrete slab, let's say, or of the concrete wall. And then you will... Uh, yes, you will perhaps uh, fill the crack a little bit, but not from the from your side of the wall, but on the uh, opposite side of the wall. Uh, so again, the crack will not be filled with resin. And then if there are some changes in the crack width, then uh, this resin, uh, this, this not enough uh, amount of resin will not uh, be able to to stop the leakage to, to occur once again. Right. Okay. So the, the fundamental aspect of drilling holes, right, is to make sure that you, that the hole intersects the crack halfway um, along its length through a given uh, slab of concrete or whatever other piece of structure you're, you're trying to repair. Is that, yeah. is that right? Yeah, that's uh, exactly, uh, that's it. Yeah, that's, that, that's right. Um, there is only one uh, uh, one more aspect to take into consideration. Uh, it all works uh, in the concrete of thickness up to, let's say, 55 to 60 centimeters. If uh, the concrete is way more than 60 centimeters, you should uh, drill two rows of holes. Um, I will explain it, uh, the situation in the uh, next uh, next version of this calculator uh, that will be updated. Everyone who will download this version of uh, ex- already existing calculator will be notified when this update uh, updated version is, is ready. So mm-hmm. don't worry, you will uh, get notified mm-hmm. with this. Yeah. All right. Well, I've got your six core principles document uh, open here, and and at the end there's a table which I understand is a a kind of snapshot of the the actual automated spreadsheet that sort of lets you automatically calculate and uh, you know enter the thickness of the concrete, and then your calculator will automatically provide a number of values. But there's a there's a there's a table here at the um, in the core principles document which provides a kind of overview of it, and there's a diagram here uh, that mm-hmm. shows 
three three different whole positions. I see um, there are three different angles: seventy five degrees, sixty degrees, forty five degrees, and and different distances um, between the crack and the uh, whole entry point. Could you could you explain what's uh, what's going on there and how that relates to uh, the calculator? So. When we understand that we can drill at different uh, angles, not only 45 that we were told for years, um, that this is the only way, the only proper uh, angle you should take in order to intersect your crack, then if we understand that there are many more angles, uh, this uh, picture uh, becomes really uh, clear. So we can we can see over here, three different triangles, and all of them have, uh, of course, like every single triangle has three sides. Yeah, the one side of the triangle is uh, B, and B is the half, is the, this number that represents the half of the thickness of this concrete that, is, that has been cracked. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then the second uh, side of this triangle is A. A is, as you explained uh, just a second ago, this distance between the crack and the and the uh, whole entry point. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is A. And C is the is this um, uh, whole length uh, from the entry point to the to this point in the very uh, in the center of the of the uh, of the concrete where you are about to intersect your uh, crack. And uh, no matter what uh, place you start to drill, if it's far away from the crack or it's really close to crack, you can still intersect the crack in this middle, uh, in, in the middle of the concrete. Yeah? Uh, the only thing the changes are angles and the length of your drilling hole. Yeah, is that right? I made it clear or something is missing? That that makes absolute sense. That makes absolute sense. So what you're saying basically is, is that your calculator and the table here in the core principles document um, shows a, a range of angles at which you can you can blast that hole into the concrete. Uh, as well um, it, in such a way that it'll intersect the crack at the midway, midway point of the slab. Um, so you have, you have a set of angles uh, for a given length. And the only, uh, I see in the table in the core principles document, you have a value uh, for the thickness of the concrete, which is capital letter D, of 30 centimeters. And the values that are in the table are mm -hmm. for a slab thickness of, of 30 centimeters. That's um, it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But in your calculator, in your automated spreadsheet, the Excel spreadsheet that uh, that you provide to uh, uh, to listeners, um, lets you select that value. Correct. You can you can enter whatever value you want in there. I think up to a, a maximum of 55 centimeters. I think yeah. you, you mm -hmm. mentioned. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and you'll get a whole different set of. You'll you'll essentially have a whole different set of values. That table will look completely different. Um, and uh, for all these different drilling angles, you will be provided with, you know, a the distance from the crack for that given angle. Right, which is where you're going to hit that hole. Absolutely. Edge. So whenever the uh, the thickness of uh, of the concrete is uh, is different, all, all these distances and the drill bit length that is also being calculated in this calculator uh, will be different. That's obvious, mm -hmm. yeah, because mm -hmm. uh, you know from the mathematical uh, point of view, uh, it's not uh, it's not a crack, it's not the drill bit length, it's just the triangle. Mm -hmm. Sure. Sure. And looking at the diagram, there's also the, obviously the drill uh, bit needs to penetrate the concrete deeply enough um, so that it intersects the midway point of the crack and that goes some distance beyond it. And I see that's lowercase d here. Um, 
could you just elaborate a little bit on um, what the objective of, of, of that and the importance of making sure that the hole uh, goes into sure. the concrete more deeply than mm -hmm. the midway point of the crack? So I just mentioned the, uh, that this calculator can allow you to uh, understand uh, uh, you know, calculate uh, the drill bit length you, you need for, for this uh, job site situation. And uh, since we can't see through concrete, unfortunately, uh, we can only imagine more or less how the crack goes uh, inside the concrete. Uh, and sometimes the crack uh, is not as smooth as I have uh, put in this in this diagram. So uh, I want to make sure that my hole will uh, will cut the crack. So the C number C is the mathematical, uh, you know. Um, Jak jest wynik? Result. Uh, so small letter C is the mathematical result um, for this triangle. But in order to make it really, uh, you know, changing from the mathematical to the job site uh, situation, we need to we need to be sure that we really cr cut the crack. So uh, I suggest to drill the hole a uh, little bit longer than only C. And in our uh, table in the in the book, I suggest to to make this um, hole deeper of five centimeters. It can be five, it can be four. It doesn't matter. A little bit de deeper than uh, C than C only. Mm -hmm. And that's also I I see that that is also a value that users um, technicians uh, can modify in the spreadsheet. Correct. That's you it. can yeah. you can yeah. opt Absolutely. to enter a value of ten in there if you want uh, mm -hmm. to drill the crack, uh, you know, much deeper. I I, I assume. Um, so there's there's a bit of leeway there, and then that that value will just get automatically added uh, to the depth of the hole in the calculator, and then you're going to have your suggested drill bit length, um, C or D. So my idea mm -hmm. is uh, not too long because you uh, don't want to make this hole. Too deep because you don't want to, to drill it all through the, the mm -hmm. concrete. Um, uh, yeah, but uh, five, four or five centimeters is, is perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay, fair enough. Well, so I think that aspect, um, the angles and the hole depths and the drill bit lengths uh, seem pretty clear, but you also have another diagram down here. Uh, which uh, shows a different uh, a different view um, of the of the crack, uh, and it has to do with hole location, um, hole spacing. Could you uh, explain what that is all about? Yeah, so we can see this the same crack from the top. Uh, so we can see uh, holes that has been uh, drilled. And we can see the crack, and we can see the spacing between holes, <clears throat> and between and the uh, spacing between the crack and the holes. Mm -hmm. So there are the, the these rules. We all kind of know them, uh, that the um, distance between holes being uh, drilled at the same side of the crack should be more or less d, which is the thickness of the concrete. I suggest to make it, uh, let's say, 8 to 10% uh, closer uh, than D. So this calculation says D minus 8%. And since we have D of 30 centimeters, uh, the distance between holes in our example in the book says 27 and, and 0.6 mm -hmm. uh, centimeters. This mm -hmm. is 8% uh, less. Mm -hmm. um, we can also see the space uh, between the crack and the hole being A. And uh, one more, we can see the, uh, the space between holes being drilled on the opposite side of the crack being B. Um, yeah, that's, that's the whole uh, story about how to, um, how to put 
this is the whole layout, let's say, the whole layout of drilling holes and placing the holes um, next to your uh, crack. Mm -hmm. Right. And so the, uh, the holes are obviously staggered uh, along the sides. And so the, the hole on the right-hand side of the crack in the diagram, it falls roughly at the midway, at the midway point. Uh, between the two holes on the left-hand side. Is, is it important to get these, you know, sort of just right or close enough is, is going to do? Close uh, enough is, is going to be perfect. If you look at this uh, table and you can see what are the differences in, let's say, distance from the crack for an angle of 44 and 45 degrees. So for 45 degrees you can you you have this angle or uh, you have this this um, distance uh, from the crack of 15.5 centimeters and 40 for 45 is 15 so uh, only half of the um, centimeters difference um you know on the construction site it's it's close to nothing so mm -hmm. it's not a hospital you don't have to be accurate for a thousand percent. It gives you the whole overview and understanding. If you, you know, if the difference is 20 centimeters, then you may say to yourself, hold on, something's wrong. But if the difference is, you know, half of the centimeters, no big deal. Mm -hmm. Right, right, gotcha. Well, so this uh, calculator looks like, uh, like a, you know, really great tool uh, that technicians, uh, I'm sure, are going to get uh, a lot of uh, a lot of utility and, and value out of. Um, in core principle uh, one uh, of your of your ebook, you um, provide a bit more insight around um, hole drilling, and uh, I was thinking that maybe uh, it would make sense to, given the fact that we're kind of on the topic of drilling holes, drilling them correctly, and, you know, what can happen if you don't, um, if you could um, hit some of uh, some of the main points that you outline uh, in the essential criteria. I, um, I see you have here something about, uh, you know, what are you going to do if you accidentally drill a hole that is, you know, too horizontally shallow? Right. So it's um, too shallow of an angle or vertically deep, you know, and the angle is too steep. Then, you know, what should you do? Should you insert packers into those holes? Uh, should you seal them up? What's your advice? Uh, if the if the if the hole is too shallow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if we inter intersect the uh, the crack too shallowly. Yeah. OK, so it may happen that when you install a packer in such a hole, then you will just install the pucker in in the crack. You will cut the crack with with the pucker, so the hole will be blind. You mm -hmm. will try to inject a resin into the blind hole because the pucker will be will cut the will cut the crack. Um, well, that is why uh, hole of this. Um, Core, core principles, uh, you know, tells you to how to avoid this uh, situation. Uh, my uh, suggestion will be to uh, drill uh, a hole new, uh, to drill holes once again. Yeah, to drill hole holes once again uh, in uh, in a very in in a better way. Uh, to drill them right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Well. Okay. So let's see if I if if I've got this right. So um, if if you've drilled a hole wrong, mm -hmm. uh, you suggest attaching uh, a packer or inserting a packer into those holes. Um, not necessarily attaching a nipple uh, and the injection pump nozzle, and just monitor them while you do the injection to see if resin uh, flows out and seals them. And if the injection, you know, doesn't cause resin to flow out. Um, so yeah, when you drill the hole, or the, the the second uh, second uh, let's say second set of holes right, mm -hmm. and you use them to uh, inject uh, this resin uh, for uh, um, in order to to make it uh, watertight, uh, then you observe the old 
uh, holes that being that have has been uh, drilled uh, incorrectly. Yeah, mm -hmm. and if you see that the resin is still flowing out of these uh, holes, then you in, in some, you you install the packer there to uh, prevent this uh, leakage, the, the resin leakage from the hole, because mm -hmm. no matter what kind of hole it is, it should be filled with resin anyway, mm -hmm. to make the whole structure uh, watertight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, <clears throat> all right. Um, it's, and... uh, you know, I can add that, that this is special, this, what I just said, is especially important when you re uh, re reinject the the resin, uh, you know, sometime uh, later than the previous injection took place, and you sometimes you can't see all uh, all of the old holes, and you you run your injection and then bah, you can see that the resin is starting to uh, flow away from a, a hole that you didn't, uh, so, um, you know suspect that he, it, it ever existed over there. Mm -hmm. yeah. and then you have to stop your injection, you have to re-drill re the, the old hole, install your new packer. Sometimes uh, the diameter of the new packer should be bigger than the previous one uh, because the hole won't be uh, clean enough and it, you will have many difficulties with ins in installing a packer of 10 millimeters then you have to re read reel it with um, 13 millimeters diameter. Yeah, so remember if you, especially when you are re-injecting the crack once again, you have to have with you different uh, packers of different diameters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it might be uh, useful just uh, to give uh, your listeners a you know, quick overview of the six core principles, because we've essentially yeah. taken a real deep dive into drilling holes right, and you've uh, discussed the um, hole drilling you know, layout and depth calculator that you provide to, um, you know, to support your listeners um, in, in making sure they do get the hole drilling right. Um, Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, that's a good point because this book uh, cons is is built of uh, is built of yes, it's a good expression. Sure, is 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 based on is based built on off six of. core principles, mm -hmm. not only mm -hmm. one. And the first one, uh, in my private opinion, is one of the most important: is drill holes right. That's true. Um, the second one is make holes really clean. So after you drill it, after the hole is made, you make it clean in order to really, um, you know, allow the resin to be to to be driven from the hole to the crack without any uh, interruptions uh, on its way. Um, the third point is install packers open. One of my, you know, um, favorite points and why. And I keep saying this. If you listened to some of the previous uh, podcast episodes, I was mentioning this like crazy all the time that install packers open is important because it makes you, it allows you to observe the, um, the injection. We just said that you we can't see through concrete so we cannot know what is happening inside the crack while being injected right so open packers will give you this idea where the resin is at the at the certain uh, point of of your injection process and you allow the air to be uh, removed from the crack while the uh, resin is taken uh, the uh, its its place inside the crack. Uh, another point is uh, says lose low uh, resin viscosity. You know the lower viscosity, the the lower pressure pressure is needed to to drive the resin from the uh, from the hole uh, into the crack and then inside the crack from one packer to another uh, so it makes the whole process more safe in order to keep your resin at low viscose uh, you should mix the smallest possible amounts of resin even less than a cup uh, or, or, or a glass um, 
the more resin you mix at one time, the faster the reaction goes uh, and the viscosity rises and perhaps you will not use the whole amount of um, uh, resin then if you will have to throw away some resin it also means that you are throwing away your money all right and, and the last one is use a small hopper again the same story if you mix small amounts then you you, you don't have to have a huge hopper on your pump um, and the last point um, use a small hopper says that if you mix uh, small amounts of resin, you don't need a, a huge hopper on your pump. That's obvious, yeah? But a small hopper allows you to really observe the consumption. Because if the consumption is really small and you have a hopper of six liters, then it's really uh, not possible to understand um, if you used some resin or not, because the resin level in the hopper will not uh, dramatically uh, go go down yeah i mean you you have a hard time monitoring the level of resin in the in the hopper is that right yeah 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 because the, the this consumption is really small mm -hmm. so you won't even notice the difference in right. in the resin level in in the hopper yeah, I'm that's, sure that's the, and that's the whole um, point of this mm -hmm. so six core principles for effective crack injection Every uh, single one of them is important. All of them complement each other. You should not use one and forget the whole rest of them. Uh, and um, so I wish you, uh, you know, good luck and, and have fun with using these uh, core principles while injecting your crack. And then since I really love this idea of making books, um, living and working with you all the time that is why it's not only the book it's not only the six core principles uh, but uh, this calculation calculator this uh, excel spreadsheet that will really uh, make your whole uh, injection job easier and in a, you can you can do it in very more very much automatic uh, way so yeah that is that's it and since this uh, injection technology, it, it's so offline. You have to be present on the job site. Yeah, You have to touch the concrete. You have to be there in person to really uh, run your injection. Yeah, so calculator uh, allows you to make at least a little bit of uh, autom automatization in your, in your, in your life. Mm -hmm. This is what I love about it about this tool. Yeah, what strikes me about the core principles is they're all so practical uh, and so applicable. Uh, and it seems like, you know, if people reference them and try to incorporate them into their workflows on the job site, um, you know, it'll it'll just facilitate a process of of habit building and then people you know will just will just kind of do them automatically and there's another dimension of automation that's no, you know that's basically yeah, gonna true. gonna help people automatically you know reduce costs and increase their uh, their efficiency and uh, and their performance so 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 uh, you know drilling right means uh, making less mistakes making less mistakes means you only go to this job site once this all means that you don't lose money you don't have any complaints people are really happy working with you so they keep um you know uh, inviting you to another job sites uh, of theirs uh, it means that your um, company grows your business grows uh, you become uh, an expert in the field um, you don't lose time. You don't lose money. You make your 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 business being uh, automatic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So even though it's offline, it can be automated for for this. And this is the 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 tools I'm giving to you uh, today. Mm -hmm. Automatically better performance, automatically higher earnings. That uh, that sounds like something that I'm sure you're. 
your listeners can uh, can sure get behind. <laughs> so, so tell me, you are about to change your uh, profession and you are about to open an uh, uh, injection service company. <laughs> well, you know, when I, uh, <laughs> I, I think that uh, that you've certainly, you know, for somebody who's thinking about getting into the industry, uh, you've certainly provided them with a good uh, dose of information that would give them a, you know, a fantastic basis for that. But um, yeah, but I'm not sure I'm quite ready to <clears throat> roll up my sleeves we'll give and, you uh, like and give you a run for your we'll money yeah, in the concrete <laughs> injection space. But who knows? Mm-hmm. Well, anyway, uh, I've, for, I've, uh, for, I've really enjoyed uh, flipping the flipping the program here on you and uh, uh, hosting, you know, quote unquote, hosting the podcast. Um, Obviously, it was the, fun, uh, you know. Uh, it, it was me who was answering the questions, so it was it was funny. New experience, a little bit of a different dynamic. Yeah, that's, that's for right. sure. No, yeah. sometimes sometimes you just got to change things up and keep them fresh. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks a lot for the conversation, and um, thanks a lot for being the host today. And uh, who knows? Who knows? Perhaps we will do it once or twice more. So get ready, Mister. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Yeah. All right. And a final, final thank you to all the listeners out there. Uh, make sure you tune in to the next episode of Concrete Injection Made Easy. And as usual, you know, tune in and uh, take your concrete injection game to the next level.